And when they say this is Trump problem, they're lying. But the Biden administration wants to hide what is going on here. How can you pass an immigration bill when you have an open border? A delegation of Republican senators took their Biden bashing to the southern border today, where they vowed once again to stand in the way of immigration reform. And it was clear they put some real thought into their press conference stagecraft. I mean, they even made their entrance from aboard a small fleet of patrol boats armed with mounted machine guns. For their right-wing faithful, that's the whole blue plate special, the great outdoors, heavy weaponry, and Republican Argo bargling on immigration. The brown people are coming. They're all going to turn into Democrats and eat you for dinner. Rah! After their arrival in Texas yesterday, some of the more opportunistic Republican lawmakers chose to record self-serving political attacks against the backdrop of suffering migrants. The worst of the photo ops, however, came, of course, from the captain of the winter storm getaway, wife non-defender and part-time Texas senator Ted Cancun Cruz. At midnight last night, Cruz posted a video from a thicket on the banks of the Rio Grande, where he said that he had witnessed members of drug cartels and human traffickers with his own special eyes. But with his bush gear and his hushed tones, Cruz looked more like he fancied himself, not as a mere senator, no, 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 but as the host of a nature documentary, narrating directly to camera like a chunky discount David Attenborough with a mullet. Or perhaps as the next Steve Irwin, crocodile hunter. God rest his actually brave soul, as our friends at Morning Joe pointed out. Now that we've got him secured, settled, and relaxed, quite comfortable, I guess. So it's past midnight. I'm standing on the shore of the Rio Grande. The water is right behind me. We're at the edge of the river. On the other side of the river is Mexico. We'll try and keep him as happy as a pig in mud. It's a public health crisis. It's important that we leave him alone now for a few hours just to let him relax. Stop sanctioning lawless chaos on our southern border. <laughs> I just want to know if there's a luxury hotel on the other side of that, of that dark thicket. David Plouffe summed up Cruz's day of adventure with a caption describing America's most ironic anti-brown person, Crusader, as the rarely seen bearded pudgy wanker in the wild. Or, as we describe him on this program, the perennial absolute worst. And joining me now is Maria Teresa Kumar, president and CEO of Voto Latino, and Charlie Sykes, editor-at-large of The Bulwark. Um, well, you know, <laughs> Ted Cruz tried his best, Maria Teresa Kumar, uh, to capture the terror that had to be felt by everyone at the southern border at seeing a dark thicket a pond on the other side of which are probably brown migrants. Your thoughts? Well, Joy, I guess we're lucky that it wasn't the version of Naked and Afraid, because that's basically what you do. <laughs> <laughs> Ew! But, Ew! But, I don't need that visual. <laughs> Sorry. Nope. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. But no, but in all seriousness, Ever. what he is doing, it's, it's all theatrics on his part. He has no solutions. And instead of actually saying that he cares about the border, he cares about keeping Texans safe, he cares about the, the, the people that are sacrificing their lives to make a treacherous journey, he makes a mockery of it. And in it, he makes a mockery of himself and the Republican Party. And it is devastating because what we should be talking about is the root causes. So you'll have on one side Cruz and the Republicans, and on the other you have Joe Biden, who has now appointed Vice President Kamala Harris to talk about the root causes why people are making that treacherous journey, to really try to under, understand the issue. Because at the end of the day, we can talk about mitigating the, the flow of people coming across the border, but we have to go to the source. We actually have to recognize that it's not the border. That's a Band-Aid. That's addressing a Band-Aid, a Band-Aid wound. But the real problem, the real issue, is coming from these individuals' home countries. Yeah, you know, Charlie, it, it, it's clear that Republicans are trying to make it look like they're driving a hard bargain with, with, with Joe Biden, saying, if you know, we want border security or you can't get immigration reform. But they did this same act with Obama-Biden and got lots of deportations, and the Obama-Biden administration got nothing because they were never going to get on the bill. You know, Mark Rubio didn't have the courage to stand up to the late Rush Limbaugh, who yelled at him on Twitter for like 10 seconds. He was like, oh, my God, I'm off 
the bill. Like, they're not going to do anything. And uh, does it, I don't know if it annoys you as much as it annoys me that the media sort of picked up on this narrative. You know, this was most of the questions to Joe Biden yesterday. Nothing mm -hmm. on COVID, you know, nothing at all on the $1.9 trillion bill that is landing in people's uh, checks in bank accounts. Like, nothing. Everyone is sort of going along with this Brown scare, and it, it, is, it, is, a, it is a thing. Your thoughts? Yeah, you know, uh, back in 1985, Neil Postman wrote a book called Amusing Ourselves to Death, and he's talking about uh, how politics has become entertainment. And, and this is the point. This is a serious problem. This is a humanitarian crisis. Yeah. And what do we get? We have the United States senators. They're not legislating. They're not proposing alternatives. They're playing dress-up. It's all cosplay. And, you know, here's a guy like Ted Cruz who at one time claimed to be a serious legislator, you know, and now posts videos of himself baking bacon with a machine gun or playing dress up uh, on, on, the, on the border. And I mean, part of it is, is sort of eye rolling, but also it really is a reflection of our politics right now. If this is a yeah. serious matter, if it's a matter of life and death and national security, why don't you act like it? Why don't you sit down and say, what is your better idea? Do you really want to just throw the kids back over across the river? Um, but this is the yeah. problem. Um, if you create the images, then you drive the narrative. And then, unfortunately, what you saw yesterday was the media picks up on that narrative. And even though we've had more than a half million Americans die from the coronavirus, not one question about that. I haven't gotten over that. Um, but you yeah. know, all the questions about the, you know, hey, well, look what Ted Cruz is saying, what's going on in the border. And look, he's wearing a flak jacket. So this must be big. This must be important. <laughs> And he thinks he looks cool, which is the funniest part. I mean, look, if you don't throw him back over the border, who's going to who's going to clean the Ritz Carlton so that when, you know, Ted wants to come over and spend some time during a winter blast, the, you know, who's going to do that? Uh, I want to ask you guys quickly about Dominion, because this is another topic we, I, that I want to get to with you guys, because this is actually a genuine threat, Maria Teresa, uh, financially. Now Fox News has been hit. They're going and systematically just suing folks who uh, pro pro sort of promulgated the big lie. Are they more likely to wind up getting justice of a sort um, than even the feds? for the January well, I think 16th it, election. It, yeah, I think what, what is happening with Dominion is very clear that they are hitting Fox News and all these right-wing folks in their pocketbooks and money talks, and they make that very clear. But Blue Dobbs was just a casualty of it, but he's not the first one. And so the more that we actually recognize what it means that we should be going after advertisers when people are not being forthcoming, when they are actually trying to hurt our democracy. One of the things that, you know, what struck me yesterday by Joe Biden was he was very clear, and Cory Booker alluded it to it yesterday. We right now in this country, we are in the fight of our democracy because it's going to be at the end of the 21st century, who won out, the autocracy or the democracy? And so, yeah. Dominion, yeah. what they're doing is they're recognizing, even in this moment, what you need to be able to do is go after the people that are trying to not only speak, create lies, but undermine our yeah. voting booth and our access to the ballot. Very quick. Absolutely. And Charlie Sachs, very quickly, the Republican Party is out of the business of, of, of ideas and out of the business of democracy, which is a stunning development. No, you would normally think that a political party would be thinking, how do we expand our appeal? How do we get people to vote for us by having better ideas and more appealing policies? Instead, um, they are doubling down on this big lie, uh, the big lie that you know, one hopes that Dominion is able to hold them you know, accountable for, um, and going through the kinds of things you're seeing in Georgia. A party of ideas doesn't feel the need to restrict um, the vote or make it illegal to hand out water to people standing in lines to vote. That is not a yeah. good faith or political party that has ideas Indeed. that they want to uh, compete with. Or cosplay on the Rio Grande because they looked really <laughs> dumb. <laughs> I mean, Maria Teresa Kumar and Charlie Sykes are coming back.